Welcome to the Morgan J. Burnt Aquatic Center for a season opening edition of Behind the Blocks. My name is Ben Turner. It's good to be back for another year. We got a meet to talk about because the Boilermakers are headed to the Show Me State. We're at two-day duel against Missouri, and we're joined by seniors Cat Mueller and Blake Ratliff. Uh, thanks for taking the time uh, this week, guys. Uh, exciting to get the season going as it always is, and like I said, it's a two-day meet to start out with. Uh, you're at Missouri. Uh, tell us a little bit about a, a two-day format, Blake. Uh, as someone who swims the IM, not every dual meet has both the 200 400 IM. Does that make it more fun for you? two-day format. Exactly, yeah, that's one thing about dual meets is a lot of times you only get to do either the 200 or the 400 and the chance to do both at a meet like this is really exciting so you don't have to worry about not getting to put up the time in one based on how you feel so it's kind of nice to be able to do both. Cat also very versatile, uh, backstroke butterfly, your specialties, uh, two-day format, we'll probably see that again at Rutgers, the Big Ten Triple Duels usually see that. How do you kind of feel it breaks down for you personally? I really like the two-day format. I especially like that it kind of breaks up the events a little bit more so you can put a little more focus on one specific or two specific events just on one day. Swim them as best you can and then warm down and then focus on the next one the next day. What's the excitement level like for the season opening meet? Is this one of those big checkpoints along the way? We're personally on the women's team, we're extremely excited. Um, you know, this is a dual meet that is a little earlier than, than normal for us, so we get the chance to get racing a little bit faster than usual, which is great. Blake, it's kind of unusual. I think I went all the way back to October of 17, so before any of you guys would have been here as seniors, that you opened on the road like this. Road trips are fun. You know, you guys are well fed. You get to go cool places. Uh, is that one of the reasons to look forward to this? I think so, for sure. There's something special about traveling and going on the road and being with a team in a new pool in a new area and kind of all the excitement that comes with that with traveling and I think it'll be good for our season opener. Tell me a little bit about the new pool atmosphere. It's kind of unique that the whole team essentially gets to see a new pool at once. I went kind of back through the last three years. You look at freshman year at, at Tennessee and probably FIU's outdoor pool, mm -hmm. sophomore year at Wisconsin and then last year for the men the triple duels at Minnesota. I don't think anybody had been there on the roster before. To see it together like that, a new pool, what is that dynamic kind of like? Uh, it's kind of nice walking in and taking in the atmosphere of everything and I think this weekend we've got a practice time schedule before the meet in the morning on Friday so that'll be a good opportunity to kind of get used to everything and kind of get our lay of the land before before the meet that night. Cat, when you race at a pool for the first time, what are some of the things that you like look for or like want to get comfortable with? Like what are some of the things that maybe a regular swimming fan wouldn't think of? For me, especially in backstroke, it's all about the walls. I want to make sure that I know my stroke count going into the walls and that I'm still legal coming off the walls, making sure I don't cross that 15 meter mark, and also getting used to the starts, uh, getting used to relay starts and just plain old backstroke wedges, things like that. So as uh, co-captains this season, and it's cool to see you guys get that distinction, what does that kind of mean for you going into senior year and, and what you try to do leading the team? It's cool. I think um, it's a really good opportunity to kind of you know be a leader, but I don't think I could do it alone. I know on the men's team, Liam Walker and Nick Sherman are my co-captains, and my whole class of senior guys is definitely they've got our backs. So uh, an opportunity for all of us to kind of lead the team and be leaders is, is really interesting, and it's really it's been off to a good start. I'd say. Cat on the women's side, at least versus last year, a lot larger senior class this season, so you certainly can share the load with your teammates. That has to be a good thing. Yeah, it's been amazing. I think everyone's really stepped up this year, uh, especially my co-captain, Alyssa Hake. We've all been trying to really motivate the team and get it going for one last season for us. Both of you finished very strong last year. A couple of career best there at Big Tens for you, Cat, and the 100 back and the 100 fly. Same for you in the IM and the 200 back uh, late in the season. Maybe tell me a little bit about how that came to be. Was it just partly like it was a normal school year again uh, in training wise or, or did you respond better to the taper maybe? I think personally it, it helped having a few more meets in the fall. You know, the year before we, we were stuck in the quarantine era, which was definitely difficult. But I also just really felt like our team culture last year was amazing. So I knew when I stepped up to the blocks that the whole team was behind me. What did you feel like was different for you late in the season? Kind of back to what Kat was saying, um, thinking back two years ago to my sophomore year, we went into every meet not knowing if that would be our last meet of the season. We didn't know if there would be a Big Ten championship. So I think a sense of um, certainty last year definitely helped us plan better for one good meet at the end of the year. 
Do you come from a new family? Was this always kind of where you were going to end up? My mom and dad both went here. Um, I've always been a Purdue fan, and I looked at other colleges growing up, but I think I've always been pretty set on going to Purdue. And so it's nice to finally be here. And it's sad that it's almost over, but I'll always be a Purdue fan. Well, you got a whole other year to yeah, go. So true. Not, yeah. not almost over quite yet, but uh, I know the feeling. Uh, mm -hmm. Kat, as someone from the Chicagoland area, um, I suppose the triple duels at Northwestern this year will be a, a meet you got highlighted. Uh, also, you're a, a social studies education major. I, I think you're probably targeting probably high school uh, for that. And uh, what's kind of the plan with student teaching? So I actually just finished my um, clinical practice application. So I'll be placed in hopefully a high school or a middle school next fall. So I will spend the whole semester teaching and then move on from there. Hopefully exciting things. Was there something that inspired you to go into that specific social studies education? Type social studies specifically? Yes, actually. My mother was a teacher. She taught for 10 years in the inner city of Chicago. Wow. So. I always like to give you guys a, a chance to shout out a teammate, uh, people that are doing well. Okay, so let's start with you, Blake. Maybe somebody from your class, somebody from your stroke group, a freshman. If you want to hit all three, you can, but who's been really doing well? Well, I'll hit two of the three. Freshman Dylan Bureau in the backstroke group. Uh, I just want to give him a shout out. He's been doing a really good job in practice and whenever we get a chance to get up and race, he does really well and he's been, he's actually gotten best times in practice and that's been fun to watch and everyone's really excited about him and I think it's going to be fun to watch him race this weekend. How about uh, anybody from your class specifically as a senior? Uh, yeah, maybe not specifically, but we've had a lot of guys uh, start to get job offers now thinking beyond swimming and so it's, it's been kind of exciting to see everyone like get things figured out and know that they're on a good path going forward. I'd really like to shout out Maggie Love. Uh, she's in the IM group and IM group and Backstroke group tend to train together a lot. Okay. Um, Maggie's a super versatile swimmer and she's always, always, always pushing me no matter if she's from Backstroke next to me or any of the other strokes. So she's been wonderful in practice. Well, we saw some great things from her as a freshman. So uh, love to see what the next step for Maggie can be. So good shout outs there for Dylan and Maggie. All right, we close things out with what we call personal preferences. So we're just looking to find out what you like, and there are no wrong answers. So we go ladies first, you pick a number between 1 and 31, the rule is you can't repeat an answer. So if Kat says her favorite team is the Chicago White Sox, I don't think you would say that, but you can't anyway. <laughs> okay. So uh, we'll see what you come up with here. The cat between 1 and 31. I'll take 18. 18. Favorite food or meal? Oh, Olive Garden pasta, for sure. We're getting three Olive Garden meals this week for, for traveling, so I'm very wow. excited. Well, and, and the swimmers always earn all those calories and all those, uh, <laughs> whatever full meals you get, because Lord knows you, uh, you, you guys burn it off every day. So here we go. All right, so uh, there's your favorite, your favorite food or meal. What do you got? Uh, I get the birthday cake remix at Cold Stone Creamery. Uh, it's my favorite ice cream. Ice cream is my favorite food. Okay. I want to give a shout out to Ben Bramley. We used to get that together. He's a diver. He graduated sure, last year. Yep. We used to go all the time and get for a ticket remix. Okay, so you actually picked number 19 in the process on your favorite dessert. So along with not being able to pick 18, you okay. cannot pick 19 okay. either. Okay, okay. So between 1 and 31, don't pick 18 or 19. Okay, uh, 23. 23. All right, another food-related question. Best place to eat on campus or in Greater Lafayette? That's a good question. I think uh, Red Seven downtown Lafayette has really good, really good burgers. The Americana is my recommendation. Got to cross the river sometimes to uh, experience all that Greater Lafayette has to offer. All right, Kat, your favorite place to eat on campus or Greater Lafayette? Recently, I've been really into Everbowl. I'm a big Smoothie Bowl fan, so that's been amazing. Okay. All right, last one here. Don't pick 17 or don't pick 18. Don't pick 19. Don't pick 23. Between one and 31. Four. Four. Well-known swimmer you'd most like to race against? Ooh. For me, it would be Maggie McNeil. I really look up to her. Um, she's been a big role model for me over the past few years. I love watching her uh, when, when we're racing them in, in dual meets or, or at Big Tens at Michigan. I think her underwaters are absolutely amazing. So yeah, Olympic medalist from Canada, yeah. also swims butterfly, mm -hmm. right? And very good at it as well. Okay, so Maggie McNeil, good choice there. Blake, you have someone in mind? Yeah, I'm not sure about his international accolades, but Will Shrensky is pretty well known around yes. here. He, he was a senior my freshman year. We always said we were going to race in a 100 breast long course, and we haven't got to do it yet. So I'm looking forward to that when the day comes. All right, well, we'll make sure we tag Will in this post so he All right. sees this and knows that he's still uh, in everyone's hearts here. Yes. And there's a 100 breast long course waiting for him. There is. Although, there certainly after is. he graduated, I'm not sure he wants to take that challenge, but we'll, we'll find out if the offer's on the table.
All right, Kat, uh, Blake, thanks for joining us behind the blocks. Uh, week one in the books. Good luck at Missouri.